Hi everyone and welcome to this video on VLOOKUPs. In this video I'm going to show you how to compare two data sets from different sources and combine the information or flag the information on one of the data sets to say whether it exists in the other one. So I've got an example data set here. Um, you can see that I've got completely made up first names, last names and email addresses so please don't try to email anybody from this list because um, they are all made up. And I've got 30 records. So you could have 50,000, you could have 100,000, you could have the maximum limit of Excel. It doesn't really matter, the techniques will work the same. I've just kept it a fairly small set to make the, um, the video run quickly. So an example would be that I have this data on my main database, but I also perhaps have a MailChimp or a .mailer account. And um, I've also got email signups in there. And I want to flag on my main database, who's in my MailChimp signups? And maybe I want to try and consolidate the data and just work from one central database rather than having email signups um, in email software, essentially. So this is my main data. I've also got my data set two, which could be anything, but let's pretend it's um, some email signup data. So I've got the email address uh, they signed up with, the region they signed up, and the signup date. So that's my data set two. The first step, is to get all your data in the same file. So different tabs, but the same file. You can see here that actually, if you look at my folder, there are actually two different data sets in there. So I'm going to use a quick technique. I could copy and paste this into a new tab uh, on the existing data file, but I actually want to be a bit quicker than that. And I'm, all the techniques I'm using are kind of better suited to big data sets. They're gonna run quicker on your Excel. So I'm gonna right click at the bottom of that sheet, select move or copy, Select create a copy and select data set one. You need to have data set one open to do this and press OK. And what happens is you end up with a file and it has two tabs, one with data set one and one with data set two. As I said, you can copy and paste, but that technique is just a bit quicker than copying and pasting and it stops you having to scroll through endless amounts of data as well. So I'm gonna switch these ones over so they make more sense. I've got data set one on the left and data set two on the right. I'm going to rename this the combined data. And I'm going to close down my data set too, so I don't get confused. So now I'm working with a combined data set, albeit separate tabs, um, we've got everything we want in the same file. So what I really want to do is have a column that says, oh, is this on data set two. And I really just want to have a yes or no in that column to say, you know, do you exist on data set two or not? In order to do that, I need to name my data set two. So if you go to data set two, I need to highlight it. And again, you could drag and drop, you know, with your mouse like this. Uh, it gets really annoying when you're dealing with big data sets. So I would use the shift, control and down key, that will take you to the end of the data, provided there are no gaps. So do make sure you scroll beyond where you think it ends, because otherwise you'll only uh, name half the data. Um, but as provided it reached the end, which I can see clearly it does here, I just right click along to the end of the data that way. So now I've got highlighted my data set too, and I want to give it a name. So if I want to give it a name, I'll go up to this name box, which you might not have ever noticed before, it's got the A1 in it, Click on there and call this data set two. Don't put any spaces or dashes or dots or anything in there. It really doesn't like it. So once you've given it a name with no spaces, hit return. And you can see that if I select the same data again, it will remind me that I've called it data set two. So um, I'm going to leave that as it is. One of the things to remember is that the thing I want to match on is email address. An email address is my first column, and that's what you want. So if you're, the thing you want to match on isn't your first column in your second data set, you do need to rearrange the fields before you name it to make sure that happens. I'm going to go back into my data set one, and I'm going to use a formula. So I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP, open brackets. Now Excel will try and tell me what sort of guide me through I best, uh, basically the formula. So it's asking me what the lookup value is. So I want to look up James underscore Robert. So I want to look at this thing in D2. So I can just click on that cell. Then I press comma 
And it says, well, where do you want to look this thing up? Well, I want to look it up in the data that I've just named. So if I start typing, it's going to remember that I've got some data called dataset2 within this file. So I can just tab to the end and, and sort of accept that and then comma again. The column index number is saying, which column of the data do you want me to return back? So it can return any column in the series. Well, initially, I just want to know the email address. So I'm just going to say, give me back what's in column one. And then it asks me for the range lookup. True is an approximate match. False is an exact match. I've never used an approximate match. I can't really see why you would. You always want an exact match with database work. So I'm going to put false and close brackets. So don't panic when you get hash NA and think it hasn't worked. It, it almost certainly has. Well, the proof's in the pudding. <laughs> we'll find out when we, when we drag the formula down. So once the formula's in, move your mouse to the tiny little right-hand corner where there's a square and double click. That will save you scrolling. It will take the formula down to where there's a gap. So again, just do the check where you scroll past it and make sure it's covered all the data. In this case, it has because I've got an email address completed for every one of these. If you haven't, you can always sort your data first so that the thing in column D is descending order Z to A. And it just then means that when you double click down, it will cover all of the data in that column. Um, but luckily, ours was complete. So it, it worked magically first time around. So what's this telling me? Well, where there's a hash NA, it doesn't exist in data set two. And where it's given the email address, it does. And that's why I've used the thing in column one, because I knew that it would be complete for everybody. So the next stage is to make this just look a bit nicer, especially if you're feeding this back to your maybe your database administrator and saying, I want these to be yeses, yes to email sign up in my main database. So instead of having the formulas in there, I'm going to copy and paste values for that whole column. So click on the column, select copy and go to the paste menu and select paste values. You can do this in all the versions of Excel, um, just Google paste values and it will show you how to do it. Um, but if you have this latest version of Excel, it has a little handy button here, which was the one, two, three. So now when I click into everything, it's actually got the, the value rather than the formula, which is great. Again, I'm not that happy with the way it looks. I don't really like the hash NAs, so I'm going to get rid of those. Set the column, find hash NA, and it's as simple as just saying, just replace that with nothing and just do a replace all. And I want to kind of get them to say yes rather than have the email address. So if I select all the data, whenever you're sorting data, especially database data, click this little um, triangle between the A and the one. Don't do that thing where you click one column and then you trust Excel to expand the column to the rest of the data set because you might have had a blank column in there that you're working with and then it won't sort everything and then everything comes out of alignment. So make sure you select everything and then go data, sort, choose is this on data set two and choose Z to A. So now I've got all the people who are on my data set two up there and I just want to give them a yes instead. So I'm just going to give them a yes. And I could drag them down or I could do something more clever, but I'm just going to drag them down and say they should all be yes. Obviously, if you're dragging um, tags down, do be careful that they end where they, where they should end. Um, so that's it. That's basically a really quick way of saying, is this on data set two? You might want to do a little bit more sorting. You might want to centralise that. You might want to put some borders in and then save that. But we might also want to get the information from data set two. So if I look at Thomas Davis, Thomas Davies, where are you? You're here. I can see that he actually signed up in the Southwest on the 3rd of November 2014. And I might want to get that data over into my data set one, not just the fact that he's a yes to email sign up. In order to do that, I'm going to create the two columns that you've got in the data set there. So region and sign up, we could just copy and paste those labels. That. And I'm going to use the same formula. I don't need to rename the data because I've already done it. So I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP, open bracket, look up the email address in data set two, comma, give me the thing that's in the second column now, 
and always give me the exact match, so always put false at the end. And double click that down. I've double clicked it all, I happen to have double clicked it all the way down to the end of my data, it doesn't really matter, we can get rid of those hash, hash NAs again. But it's given me all the regions back. And then again, we might want to do that for sign update. So equals VLOOKUP. Data set two, column three, and false. So date looks horrible in Excel when you haven't formatted it as a date. So just double click, sorry, single click the column and choose date to make it look a bit nicer. Now, I don't want those formulas to stay because I'm going to, in a minute, I'm going to delete what's in data set two. And I know that's going to just throw out all my formulas. So don't forget to either overwrite the data with something as in yeses or you copy and paste values. So I'm going to copy here and I'm going to select from the paste menu the one, two, three, the values. And that means when I click in there, it just says Southwest now. It doesn't refer to some data set. If you want to get rid of the hash NAs, you could use a find and replace or because I know they're all together, you could just use a control down and get rid of them. Again, we could neaten it up a little bit, put in some lines and you're done. So in theory, everything on data set two is now in my main data set. So I've consolidated two data sets together, but I want to double check that's true. Maybe someone has signed up on my MailChimp list that's not on my main database. So I'm going to reverse the process. I'm going to do a VLOOKUP again, but I'm going to use data set two and see who from there is in here. So I need to name data set one. Uh, as I've explained, you have to have the data that you're looking up in column one. So this time it's email address that we're using. So I'm going to select email address and call it data set one. The reason I'm not selecting all the data is because I don't really care about what else is on the main database. I just want to have this column of data. So I've named that and I come over here to data set two and say, are you on data set one? And I'm going to use the VLOOKUP again. So hopefully you're kind of getting a sense for how to use the VLOOKUP. So equals VLOOKUP. Look up that email address in data set one. And just give me the thing that's in the first column. In fact, we only have one column, so that's our only choice. And give me an exact match to so put false. And double click that down. So as it happens, all of, the, all of my data on, on um, data set two is already on data set one. And that means basically I can now right click and delete this file because I've consolidated everything on here. And so all the data we had on two spreadsheets have now become on one spreadsheet. I hope that's helped you understand VLOOKUPs.